So a lot of y'all, and by that I mean like three people, have asked me how I sketch my portraits. Cause I think I previously mentioned it in a video that sketching is the most important part of portraiture in my opinion. Like it is the foundation in which you build the other aspects of portraiture, in my opinion at least. If sketching is part of your process, obviously, then if not, then like why the hell are you here? Exactly. Kidding aside, today I'll be showing you how I sketch my portraits. And obviously, a bit of a disclaimer, this isn't the only way that you sketch a face. There are many different ways that you can go about doing a portrait. This is just my preferred method of doing it, and hopefully you can learn a thing or two from my process. And obviously, I do things a little bit differently for every portrait. Things like the angle, the lighting, and the person's pose and facial expression will determine how I go about this process. Today I'll just be showing you how I did this portrait of the beautiful Audrey Hepburn and show you some tips on how I draw realistic portraits. So if you're interested, then keep on watching. For most portraits, the first thing I do is establish center lines. Those two lines form a cross and basically establish the center of the face, as the name implies. Having this pair of lines can be very helpful in making sure that you're not confused with the tilt and the angle of the head, because that's a very common thing that I notice with beginner's artworks. The angles in which the features are positioned are kind of wonky in a way because they are so used to drawing heads that are perfectly straight and once they use reference from a person who is maybe slightly tilted in the way they pose, they become very confused with how they tilt the lips, how they position the eyes and all of that. So I think it's very helpful to have these guidelines at first. The first thing I draw after that is this very boxy shape. I don't know if I'm using the right term, but I think it's like on your orbital bone or something like that. Basically, it's where your nose and your eyebrows meet. I really love using this shape as this establishes the connection between the nose, the eyebrows, and the eyes themselves. And you'll see throughout this video that the overarching idea behind realistic portraiture is just establishing the right angles, distance, and size relationships with each of the features. Delving into more stylized work is basically just the exaggeration of some or one of these aspects in order to prioritize appeal over accuracy. Maybe in future videos, I'll elaborate more how I stylize my work, but for now let's just stick with realism, okay? Next will be the eyebrows. Remember that when you're drawing eyebrows, or basically any feature for that matter, do not add too much details at first. Remember that you're still in the sketching process and there's no need to rush the rendering. Piggybacking off the idea that I said earlier about portrait sketching being just getting the right angles, distance, and size relationships, you should first focus on drawing the big shapes that make up the face, rather than focusing on those tiny details that fill up those big shapes that I mentioned earlier. Because if the larger shapes that comprise the image don't work, then it is pretty much expected that those tiny details that you want to add, like those hairs, lashes, and freckles, won't really do anything to save the image. Do that with the eyebrows, you know, ask yourself questions like, is the size of the eyebrow relative to this first boxy image that I created accurate? Does its length accurately represent what you see in the reference image? Did I get the distance right? These are questions that you have to constantly ask yourself to evaluate if the shapes you are making fit into this puzzle basically that is the final image that you want. It doesn't have to be perfect yet, however, it has to be good enough that it won't mess up the other features once you start using this shape as an anchor point for the next ones that you'll be making. After I feel like I've created the correct eyebrows for this portrait, I then move on with the eyes. There's this common saying in art theory that you should be drawing what you see instead of what you think you see. And this is basically just a reminder to not rely on your idea of what an object looks like based on their symbols. Because when people draw eyes, they tend to draw something like this, which is very inaccurate to what a realistic human eye looks like. Rather than drawing an eye, they draw a symbol of it. And of course, that doesn't really look <laughs> good, <laughs> in my opinion. I might even do a dedicated eye tutorial in the future, but I'll just be going over some basic things for now, because you know, this video will be very very long if I discuss every feature in great detail. So subscribe to my channel, so you can get notified whenever I post new videos, and yeah. See how smooth that was? <laughs> Look at me promoting my channel. Come on. Okay, back to the video. So whenever you're drawing eyes, just make sure that you observe the shapes that make up the eye and follow the tilt of the center line that we established. 
For the nose, I tend to do things a little bit differently than when I was still a beginner. Now I don't really draw a lot of the plane changes in the bridge of the nose, especially in this front angle. But if you're still a beginner, then I feel like it'll be really helpful for you to imply the plane changes that happen in the nose bridge. And to do that, you can reference the SRO head, and it's basically a 3D model of the human head. And it is very helpful in trying to learn the major and the minor planes of the human head, specifically for the nose. Just make sure that you're measuring the distance of the nose to the eyebrows and that you're not making it too long or too short. Just keenly observe the reference. An advice that I can give for measuring the width of the nose is looking at which part of the eye the nostrils align with. This will be different for every person, so just observe the reference. Another thing that I like to do when I'm sketching is add strong shapes of cast shadow. As you can see, I added one under the nose, and I just love having this geometric look to my cast shadows. And with the lips, I'm just making sure that it is as wide as it is in the reference by its width relative to the eyes. And here, as you can see, I'm adding another cast shadow under the lips. After most of the facial features have been established, I then add the outline for the face. Again, I feel like I'm being a little bit repetitive in this tutorial, but <laughs> I'm just making sure that I'm comparing the angles and the sizes and the placements throughout this process, especially in this part because, you know, it's the face shape. It frames the facial features in a way, so it's very important to get it right. For this part, and just overall, when you're drawing the silhouette of an object or a person, I feel like it's very useful to look at negative shapes. Negative shapes are those spaces, basically, that are formed between the subject and the reference that you're using. Using your awareness of these negative shapes can really, in my opinion, improve your accuracy in replicating the images that you see and putting it on canvas. So always be on the lookout for these shapes. They can really level up the way you do your portraits. And not even just portraits, even with figure drawing, I find that it's really helpful to apply this concept of negative shapes to my figure drawings as well. So yeah, that's a bit of a tip for you right there. Now I'm moving on to the hair. Like I said earlier, please don't get too caught up with drawing every single detail at the beginning. Especially if you're drawing for the purpose of painting on top of it later. Drawing those tiny strands, well, you can do it later, okay? Just first focus on the big forms that make up the hair, and also the negative shapes that you can see outside of it. Throughout this process, you can always flip your image, your canvas rather, and see if maybe you made some mistakes that you didn't notice earlier. Flipping your canvas really helps you highlight the things that maybe are a little bit wonky because it refreshes the way you see your artwork. It's kind of like seeing it for the first time, kind of. But don't overdo the flipping because in doing that, you might get desensitized to the flipped version of your image and that just defeats the purpose. So yeah, if you're me and you also use Krita for painting, then you can press the letter M on your keyboard and this will show you the flipped version of the image and you can just press M again to bring it back to its original orientation. And as you can see, I added another cast shadow under the neck. During this part, I actually realized that I made a bit of a mistake. I made the hair a little too big, which I just fixed with some transform tools. And that's another thing, you are allowed to make mistakes. Even though, yeah, it makes things a little bit more difficult, especially if those mistakes that you made happened in the earlier parts of the process where you were still establishing the foundation of the portrait, I believe that the mistakes that you can make in portraiture can be fixed. So don't be too hard on yourself and just keep creating even if you are bound to make some errors along the way because making mistakes is part of the process of learning art and if you're not willing to let go of perfection then you are just doing disservice to yourself by limiting your experience because you're too afraid to make mistakes. Do not compare yourself to the perfection that you see on social media. Because it's very uncommon for artists to show their artworks that they think are not good. The artworks that you see on someone's Instagram, for example, are probably just a small fraction of the paintings that they created throughout their art journey. So yeah, I know it sounds kind of cliche to say that you shouldn't be comparing yourself to other people online, but it's the truth. We are all on different stages of our life and you are allowed to have bad days. And in portraiture, you can always go back and fix your previous mistakes. During this part is just where I make some final touches, some slight stylization. I made the face a little bit shorter and I made this neck a little bit smaller. So that is it. Did you learn something? I hope you did. 
If you did, then comment on the video what you learned and let me know what you think. You can always suggest new videos that you want me to make and yeah, like this video if you enjoyed it and subscribe to my channel. And follow me on my social medias. I have a Redbubble shop so you can check it out if you want. And that's it for today's video. I hope you have a nice day.